We'll flash back to January 2004 when the Opportunity rover arrived in Meridiani Planum to investigate the planet's biggest deposit of hematite. What it found was a total surprise on this episode of Mars Guy. There's a vast plain on Mars at its prime meridian, hence the name Meridiani Planum. If you could see it in infrared wavelengths, you'd find it covered in the iron oxide mineral hematite. Because similar deposits of hematite on Earth involve water, it's a beacon for a possible ancient water environment. That's why Opportunity was sent there. And here's how it arrived. The lander and rover are cocooned inside a huge set of airbags that inflate just before landing. This now vintage video from Dan Moss shows the landing system in the final moments when the tether is cut and the packages drop to the surface. The kinetic energy and one-third gravity mean the airbags bounce repeatedly and over a long distance before finally coming to a rest where they were then deflated and the lander unfolded. Unanticipated was the cosmic hole in one, with the airbags rolling into this tiny crater that turned out to be a scientific bonanza. Here's the lander in what became known as Eagle Crater, and here's Mars Guy for scale amidst the rover tracks after it did its work and departed. You can also see the imprints of the airbags, which trace out the final moments that must have looked like a giant golf ball lingering above the hole just before falling in. One of the bounce marks is right next to the only rock in the scene. This was the first of the stunning aspects of this landing site. Where are the rocks? A few weeks earlier, Opportunity's twin, the Spirit Rover, arrived in Gusev Crater in a landscape littered with rocks, just like all of the previous landing sites. Meridiani Planum is strangely free of rocks and also is much less dusty, giving it the dark brown appearance. The airbag retraction scraped away a layer of material, and the imprints of the airbags actually show the seams. Views from the infrared spectrometer provided the first clues about hematite. It was not in the airbag imprints. Apparently, the airbags somehow cleared away the hematite. Turns out that the hematite occurs in tiny spheres that litter the surface. Here's a quarter for scale. They look bluish in false color images, so they became known as blueberries. The airbags had pressed the blueberries into the sandy soil, hiding them from mini tests. No one had predicted the hematite of Meridiani Planum would be in the form of little blueberries. But where did they come from? The first place to look was in the light colored rock outcrops. This was another stunning feature of the landing site. All previous missions had landed amidst rocky rubble. This was bedrock that had formed in place and it was layered like water deposited sedimentary rocks on Earth. And there they were. The blueberries were eroding out of the layered rocks and the agent of erosion, basaltic sand, was right there in the scene. The hematite spheres are harder than the layered rocks, so they're left behind after the rocks erode. The rock abrasion tool, aka the rat, ground into these rocks to give the other instruments a better look at their composition. Turns out that they're made from basaltic minerals mixed with sulfates like gypsum and jarosite. These are evaporite minerals that probably formed in an ancient Playa Lake setting. And the blueberries are probably hematite concretions that formed from groundwater flowing through basaltic sandstone. Similar concretions found in sandstones in the state of Utah are known as Moki marbles. This all adds up to evidence for a watery environment in ancient Meridiani Planum, but it's not clear if this was a habitable environment, and there's certainly no evidence of any inhabitants.